Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Paolo Fai and I will be talking about microprofile open tracing and looking beyond to open telemetry project. Before we start, I would like to know who of you is using distributed tracing in your companies. Right? Uh, and okay. So on today's agenda, there will be a brief introduction to distributed tracing as a concept in general. Then we will deep dive into microprofile open tracing specification. And I will do a demo on Quarkus with the Jaeger tracing system. And last but not least, I will talk about open telemetry. Uh, I will do some introduction and I will uh, mention like how we can integrate open telemetry project inside microprofile. Before we start, just a couple of words about myself. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I've been working on distributed tracing for about the last three years. And on a daily basis, I work on Jaeger, open tracing, and open telemetry project. So if you want to talk about any of these, feel free to reach out to me. So first, first of all, we have to ask this question, why tracing? Why should we care about distributed tracing at all? And the answer is actually very simple, because modern architectures, modern systems, are very complex, are very uh, hard to understand what is happening inside. And uh, for example, nowadays, when you're loading any major website, uh, you know, the data which is required for you, uh, it, it, it can hit maybe dozens or hundreds of services. So just loading a simple page means, you know, complex computation in your environment. And it might look like something like this. This is actually a screenshot from Jaeger uh, from Jaeger tracing system, it shows an infrastructure in Uber. Uh, there are maybe like uh, 2,000 services, so each node represents the service. And when you uh, load the page or web app, uh, the request usually goes to maybe, you know, uh, dozens, hundreds of services. So it's quite complex invocation. And the question is, uh, how do we understand what happens with such a request? We want, and this happens, for example, like thousands, billions, millions of times uh, a day. So the question is, how do we, what do we do when something goes wrong? We want to actually pinpoint the error in a specific service, but also in a specific component inside that service. And traditionally, we used to use uh, metrics and logs to understand our applications. But there is a problem with distributed architectures because metrics, they, they kind of provide like uh, executive view on the system, what is happening in a big picture, but there is no context. You see some spikes, but you don't know why. Uh, with logs, there is, there is context, there is a lot of context, but it's almost impossible to correlate these events together and actually to find out what happened after the after specific log or just before. So these two observability techniques doesn't provide uh, enough value for distributed architectures. So the moni ultimately monitoring should tell you the story what happened with each single request. You should be able to, to tell like what services were involved and what kind of metadata were sent between these services. And metrics and logs doesn't provide this. So th the answer is to use distributed tracing. Uh, so before we deep dive, I'd like to quickly demonstrate how tracing works uh, on the, at a high level. Uh, so imagine there is a service A, which is exposed to, to the internet, and there is a request coming uh, to your ecosystem. And what tracing does, it creates a unique ID called trace ID. This ID is put into the context, which can contain more metadata. And this context, it's sent to all downstream services. It's propagated to all services. Uh, and the invocation in the service is modeled uh, with, a, with a span. So A, that line A represents an invocation in the service A. You see it has some duration. Uh, so we are able to tell you know, what, how long it took to process the request in the service A. When service A is, uh, calls any downstream services, uh, the same thing happens again. Uh, the context is propagated and uh, tracing uh, creates spans for each invocation for in, in each service. So then we have something like this, which might remind you of Gantt chart. Uh, and you are able to tell a couple of things about this invocation. For example, that 
uh, service A first calls service B, and after the invocation in service B, it calls service E. Uh, so maybe you could optimize this and call service B and service E in parallel. Um, so the foundation of distributed tracing is really the context propagation. And to propagate the context from service to service is actually very simple, right? You just put some, the trace ID is the context into the record headers and that's it. But the problem is that we have to propagate this context inside our applications. And in Java, we can use something like thread locals. You know, when the request arrives, we put the context in inside the thread locals. And on the client side, when we are calling any downstream services, just get the context from, from thread locals. Very simple thing. But the problem is that our code nowadays is very complicated. We use a lot of thread pools, queues, and futures. Uh, so you basically, thread locals just doesn't work anymore. Uh, so in context propagation is usually uh, the most, the hardest thing to do in tracing. Uh, so this brings us to microprofile open tracing. Uh, so what is open tracing? Open tracing is cloud native computing foundation project. Uh, it's, uh, it defines tracing API and a specification. Uh, so the API is defined in many languages. It's vendor neutral. And it does basically nothing. It has an a API set of interfaces. Uh, there is no data or wire format. So if somebody says, I'm receiving open tracing data, it's, it's nonsense because there is no data format. Uh, nor there is a wire format. When I was talking about this context, which is propagated from service A to service B, open tracing doesn't define that. Every tracing implementation defines like what is the, the format of the context sent between services. And there's also specification, which defines like what kind of metadata is attached to each individual span. So for example, HTTP request uh, is represented uh, all in with the same you know, labels uh, for each service. So in MicroProfile, we took open tracing specification as it is, the upstream, and we exposed uh, the API inside our deployments. We also added a couple of uh, new APIs to make it easier to work with uh, in Java E environments. And we defined, like, we use the open tracing semantics to describe events inside MicroProfile. So the spec is divided into really two parts. The first one is called auto-instrumentation. Uh, it means that you basically don't have to do anything in your applications. You just drop jar in your class path. And for example, just JAXRS and MicroProfile REST client are automatically traced. So on this slide, you can see there is a REST endpoint hello. Uh, when you create a request to this, requ to this endpoint, uh, tracing would automatically send data what happened in the invocation. The other part of the spec is explicit instrumentation. This is more for power users. Uh, it allows you to, to change tracing and define additional events. So for example, you have complicated business code. Uh, so this allows you to instrument the business code to get uh, timing information about it. There is, an, there is trace annotation, which you can use on CDI beans or REST endpoints. Uh, you can change the, the operation name of a span uh, or you can just disable tracing. The other thing is that you can inject a tracer, open tracing tracer, uh, and use the full open tracing API. This also allows you to, uh, to use any open tracing instrumentation from upstream. So for example, you are using JDBC or JMS, you can use upstream you know, upstream open tracing libraries to automatically trace these technologies. Then there is uh, configuration. We use microprofile config to configure open tracing. Uh, there are two properties at the moment. The first one is to configure the operation name for um, server side JAXRS events. Uh, so either you get the HTTP verb with a uh, with the class name and uh, the method name, or you get the values from the path annotations as an operation name for server-side JAXRS events. Uh, the next property is key pattern. Uh, it's useful when you have some APIs you 
don't want to trace, we just define, you know, regex, and those APIs will be excluded. Uh, so now I will do the demo on Quarkus. Okay, so it's a uh, basically very simple Quarkus application. We're just using uh, Jax, JaxRS, so REST Easy, REST Client, and Open Tracing. In Quarkus, open tracing automatically pulls in Jaeger implementation, but uh, conceptually you could use, yeah, yeah. Is it better? Yeah. So there are basically three dependencies: REST Easy, uh, REST Client, and Open Tracing. Open Tracing pulls in Jaeger, but uh, conceptually you could use any Open Tracing implementation like Zip Team, uh, or, uh, Lightstep, or basically any. Then there is a there is REST endpoints. Uh, it's very simple, just, you know, say hello, it returns hello, say bonjour, it returns bonjour. Then there is conversation service, uh, conversation endpoint, which calls the service, the CDI service, uh, which has a REST client, and the REST client defines two endpoints, hello and bonjour, and basically calls itself, so the application calls itself. Just to demonstrate the context is propagated, you know, on the wire. <coughs> uh, then there are some some properties. Uh, we will use the the HTTP path for the server side events, and we will exclude foo endpoint from from tracing. Then uh, you have to configure every tracing system has a configuration. Uh, you usually have to configure the uh, the service name. Uh, because the tracing doesn't know what is the service name from the from the runtime. Uh, then you have to usually configure the sampler. We'll use constant sampler, basically sample all requests, and, and then the endpoint for Jaeger to you know sends data to to this endpoint. I will just uh, run Jaeger server and redeploy Quarkus. And let's try to do a request. So we call hello, it returns hello. I call bonjour, it returns bonjour. And let's try to do, to do, to do some talking. Um, so bonjour and, and hello. So now we should have some data in uh, in Jaeger. So this is the main like search page in Jaeger. Uh, you have to choose the the service you are looking for. So in our example, it's tracing example. We define that in the in the application properties, uh, and then. It shows all the requests, all the transactions, what happened, and the service, uh, where the service was involved. Uh, so we see information like, uh, we call the conversation as the first endpoint, or there was a request uh, to, to the bonjour or to hello. We see how many operations were there. Uh, so this one is the with the chaining calls, and this one is just for a single bonjour endpoint. We see the, the overall duration and of course the time. If there is an error, it will also show an, what you know the number of errors would happen in a in the service. So let's choose this one. Uh, I think when I first look at this graph, it looks a bit overwhelming because there is a lot of information, but it's actually very simple, very simple to understand this uh, this screen. 
So on the left side, we see the, the service names. So in this case, it's always the tracing example because tracing example calls itself. And then there is the operation name. Uh, so this is really the, uh, the value from above annotations. Uh, it's maybe good to, to call up them all. So we see the first endpoint. If we open it, we open it, we see the, the conversation uh, called like this API and then this API called two, uh, made two calls. If I extend them all, I see that, uh, you know, it called like two different endpoints. When I zoom in into the each individual span, I see what metadata is attached. So we see tags, we see like what was the, the status code, what component reported this span, what is the, the span kind. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because when you are creating a call to a server, the server models the invocation. So the span kind is a server. But when a cli client creates the same call uh, for the same, you know, the same URL, the, the span kind will be the client. So you have always for HTTP calls or any RPC, you have usually two, two spans, the client and the server. And there is some Jaeger metadata. What you can, what is missing here, but uh, if you, you can also attach logs to your spans and you will see, you know, the timestamps. So there is a difference between tags and logs. Logs are timed and tags are just any metadata which are, which apply for the whole invocation of the span. So what we can do can, for example, use trace annotation to, uh, to override uh, the, the operation name. So instead of pointer, we can say uh, we can say just high. So let's let's have a look. see so there is no pointer anymore we, we change the operation name but you can also do uh, so let's let's have a look in the conversation service so conversation service is CDI beam and CDI is not automatically traced we have to use this traced annotation to create spans for it but for example the the greeting service the micro profile rest client uh, so let's try to do this let's let's uh, remove this trace annotation, so we will not produce spans for, for this service. And let's have a look if the REST client is able to, to connect to this trace what is happening. So before we had six spans, and now we should get only five because we are not tracing the CDI invocation. It's important to, to understand that the context, you know, the, the span context is, uh, is always propagated even though you are not creating so many spans. Yes. Yes, so Jax rest it is automatically because we see this conversation span which represents server side Jax rest request. And then this hello which also represents Jax rest service. So I removed trace annotation from a CDI beam. This is a CDI, right? So we are not getting the, the span for the CDI. So it's, it's not present here, but when I go back, this has a six spans 
and the CDI is this one, which contains you know the package name, class name, and the method name. Yeah. So the main idea of the spec is to provide tracing capabilities out of the box, so you don't have to uh, write the code in your application. Uh, but if you want to, you can still use the full API to create any additional events. So I will go back to slides. So on potential roadmap, there are a couple of uh, features we, we can work on. We can improve the operation names for REST client, uh, because at the moment, if I go back, the REST client contains only, you know, the operation name is the HTTP uh, verb, which is like get, it's like, it's very generic, it doesn't tell you like, but uh, if you're looking for this specific span, it's very hard to do it because uh, all invocations for REST client will have the HTTP get. So in the UI, we will choose the get, which can be like many different calls. Uh, then we would like to introduce maybe more uh, annotations, so you could add tags to the active spans, and also do automatic tracing for CDI, which basically you can do two things, either like enable all CDI to be automatically traced and provide some kind of exclude pattern, or exclude all and provide include pattern, so you would write like package name and all beans inside the package will be traced. Uh, then there is uh, ongoing discussion with microprofile reactive messaging. We would like to trace the, the messages going through. Uh, and also fault tolerance. With fault tolerance, the main problem is that the, uh, the context is not being propagated out of the box. Yeah, so maybe once these two will depend on the context propagation spec, it will make the things easier. Uh, so this brings us to open telemetry. Uh, you know, propagate the context, context across different tracing systems. And data format is also very useful because a lot of applications, for example, like Envoy, uh, they wanted to use uh, open tracing, but they couldn't because we didn't have data format. And they didn't want to include all the tracing or the open tracing implementation and compile them into single binary. This doesn't make sense. So they end up using Zipkin because uh, the project provided a data format. The, the scope of this project is a little bit bigger than tracing. There is tracing, but also metrics API, and maybe sometime in the future logs. Uh, how we integrate this together? So we will provide uh, the same, the same events will have the same metadata attached to it. So all the HTTP metrics, related metrics, will have the same tags as the HTTP uh, traces spans. And also, when I showed the context, uh, in open tracing, there is this term uh, 
package. It is the, you can put any value inside the context. It will be propagated. So for example, a good example is to use, for example, the user agent. You can put their user agent in your first service, which is exposed to the internet. And then user agent is propagated to all services. And then, for example, with Istio, you can route some of the downstream services based on the user agent. So for example, you can redirect you know, uh, iOS user to a different version of a service than other users. But what is good with this uh, in OpenTelemetry, you can use this, uh, this baggage to split the metrics. So you can include baggage values inside your metrics uh, tags. The APIs, like the tracing API, is very similar to Open Tracing and Open Census. It provides the same features, but it's it's different. It's a breaking change. Uh, one of the biggest changes is how we get the tracer. Uh, there is a there will be a concept of so-called like named tracers. So you will provide the the name and the version. And this is useful when you would like to uh, disable tracing for a specific component. So let's say the MongoDB client it's, is you know, creating a lot of spans, a lot of spans which doesn't provide any value to it. You can then simply disable it in the configuration. And other big change is uh, agent and collector. Uh, so it's, uh, we took it from open census. So before you basically instrumented your application with open tracing, uh, you use specific tracer and you, you had to stick it with it. You couldn't change it. If you wanted to change it, you had to, you know, rebuild your application and redeploy it, which is a uh, very expensive thing to do, right? So with uh, with agent and collector, it's actually the same component, but you can you can have two di two different deployment models. Uh, so the agent allows you to receive data in any like in any format. Basically, you can use the open census, which should be open telemetry, but you can also send the data from Jaeger, Zipkin and other tracing systems if there is a, you know, the, the receiver for it in, in the collector. So you can get the data and then you can send the data also to the collector or you can export to your tracing system. So this way you can, you know, change the format in the collector and s export it to a different system. You don't have to redeploy your applications. Uh, there's also like, we would like to do also tails based sampling, like the sampling which happens after uh, after the event. And the collector is necessary because we have to keep all the data in memory for some time and then decide whether the span is uh, you know, interesting and we collect it or not. Okay, so how can we integrate open telemetry in microprofile? There are a couple of proposals. We can either create a new specification for open telemetry uh, it will be probably very similar to open tracing, uh, just you know, we use the different API, or we can expose the open telemetry inside microprofile open tracing. Uh, this is a little bit. Uh, this will provide us uh, one feature that we could uh, the spans started in open tracing could be continued in open telemetry inside a single process. Then there is a hybrid model that we could uh, create a new project for open telemetry and in open tracing update the current API to the latest version, which allows us to use the so-called shim, which is uh, open tracing implementation baked by open telemetry. Or maybe, you know, the last proposal could be define our own tracing APIs in, uh, uh, in micro profile. This is a lit little bit tricky because I think we should still allow to use uh, upstream instrumentation for instrumentations from you know open telemetry ecosystem uh, if people want to trace any additional technologies. Okay, so the last last slide. Uh, my recommendation is to start with distributed tracing as early as possible because if you want to use it you have to really instrument all your applications and once you have like hundreds of applications it's very very difficult to start because if you just instrument you know some of them you will not get any value from from tracing and if you are, if you care about micro profile and about tracing in micro profile there is a proposal on the on the mailing list so anybody can go and vote 
what is uh, what is the best approach to to go forward. Do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it could be tracing system could implement some filtering, but by default, you know the the instrumentation APIs send all the data. Some libraries, yeah, <laughs> some libraries they provide you with a filter, so you could potentially fil filter out some events. Yes. Yeah, so we, we don't define the tracing backend, the storage. So this is really a feature of the of the implementation. Well, it, it dep Not in the moment, but it, it also depends how you send this data. So if it's like in your payload, it wouldn't be logged at all. If it's in the you know in the URL, yes. We do we do not touch the payload at all. Yeah. Yes. So the question is about performance impact, and if you if you measure performance impact of the instrumentation, uh, it's usually in in isolation you do usually see very little difference, like almost almost nothing. But when you deploy it in your environment, uh, it, it will change because you know the traffic from sending the data to the tracing system will affect you know the latencies in your ecosystem. So you you should really measure it in your real environment rather than in uh, isolation. Then how to deal with that, right? You can change the, the sampling. So you can say, I will sample only 1% you know, or even less of the requests. Uh, it's part of the implementations. It's, it's, uh, in open telemetry, it will be part of the spec, but uh, in open tracing, it's part of the implementations. Yeah, usually all of them offer some kind of sampling, at least like probability sampling, uh, where you can define like how many, what percentage of the spans will be sent to the tracing system. Yeah, so it, it depends on the tracing implementation. In Jaeger, we have this configuration, you can change it on the, on the server and it will be propagated to the So, yes, yeah, so I'm part of the Jaeger team. We are collaborating with Open Telemetry. We are working on different parts of the system. So, for example, we are doing some work on the spec level in the Java API, and also uh, we are working on the operator for Kubernetes. So, where you would you know, define how the collector and agent will be deployed, so then you can send the data. But uh, as in, in Jaeger, for example, we would like to actually deprecate our components uh, and use open telemetry instead. So if you if you want to use open telemetry with Zipkin or Jaeger, it's uh, actually very minimal work for Zipkin community to, to integrate with it. <laughs> 
it's hard to say. I think some SDKs have Zipkin exporter and Zipkin receiver. Yeah, there's also a specification or proposal uh, saying like how Zipkin events um, should be, you know, created from open open telemetry API. I think the date is not set yet. It will be sometime in like next year. Uh, on the spec level, there is a document uh, outlining the, the features we want to get in and when it will probably happen. Okay, thank you very much.